Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk about a little paint jam slash paint challenge. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So recently I had the boys up for our annual VinciCon. Now VinciCon is when uh, Sam Lenz, John Ninas, also known as Ninjon, Uncle Adam, and, and usually Miniac come hang out here and we just paint and jam and talk and do a bunch of fun stuff over a weekend. Sadly this year Scott was not able to attend, although you'll still see how he was here in spirit in the video. Uh, but we all got a, had a different idea this year. Uh, this year we were all going to paint the same thing. Specifically we were going to do Alana from Big Child Creatives. Now this is a really fun bust and it gave us all a chance to work on the same project simultaneously. The idea being then as we worked on it if we ran into challenges or had questions we could pass around the figures to each other and since we were all working on the same model resolving the same challenges and trying to get to the same place a good looking display quality paint job on this bust we would have better information and feedback to give each other in real time. This was an awesome experiment. Let's see how it went. The first thing I did was honed in on the skin. I knew I wanted to do something that was sort of zombie-like, and so I focused in on both the color of the skin and on the uh, sort of uh, free-handing the wounds and open, torn skin, for lack of a better term. That took me most of the first day, but all in all, I do think it came out pretty awesome as a place to start. Let's check in on the other boys, see how they're doing as well. All right, John, so we're, we're like midway through really what's the full day one. Yeah. You've made um, a full zero progress on your bust from what you did yesterday, though it still looks more advanced than where mine is by far. So well done. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. But you have been jamming your golden demon piece quite a bit. Yeah, my plan was to get all of his undercloth and then the leather's done today, which I'm pretty much done with that. And then I'm going to switch over to the bust. I wanted to make headway every day on the Golden Demon piece, just so I... My goal is that by the end of the weekend, I have this, this piece done or almost done. And then this one will be a totally different approach and have fun in a different way with the big brush and, and make a lot of impact and just kind of see. I don't have a expectation of what it's going to be like. I'm sure at some point I will take it into your office, spray it with fluorescent pink, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything will be fine. Nearly ruin it, and then realize that it's all awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's Sam? My strategy. <laughs> let's take a look. Let's see where you're at. How's it going over here? Uh, pretty well. I'll try to get the better lighting on that. Oh, yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm getting um, the non-metallic metals established. I had to spend a lot of time in the hair just getting in and out of all these details, you have to glue the head on before you can connect the sword and stuff, so I had to paint it in sub-assemblies, basically. So I finally have it to the point where it's all together. I'm really happy with the overly red scheme, but yeah, there, there's a balancing act going on in there, and I'm, I'm realizing the metals are my, you know, as far as contrast goes, they're my light object among all the dark. Sure. Which originally was just going to be her skin. That still has miles to go, but... Now I can push everything up to that kind of halfway point. Yeah. I love the three approaches. I realized I said this in the car. I want to say it here. So when we got this, when we all started doing this, like John immediately goes in, does all this complicated airbrush work to set light and hue and value and, and sort of all this stuff, right? So he's got all this color interplay happening. Sam, uh, classic Sam, goes for like a wide sweeping kind of wet blend with a big brush, you know, gets like the the basic tones and sort of in like ideas of the values and where you want the light to be, what where the colors are going to sit, kind of bringing the whole thing into some kind of balance and then you spend the rest of your time adjusting, right? Pretty much. And and refining. Block, wet blend, refine. Yes. And then Vince over here who started from pure black just goes you know, I've got a really good idea for the skin. I'm just going to spend an entire day painting that and uh, didn't do anything else. So <laughs> just really three different approaches to model painting here. Very targeted approach in the case of Vince. Uh, I think I'm just kind of in the middle. Yeah. John went very broad. To he went wide. Yeah. 
I went specific. You went kind of middle ground. Let's see how Scott's doing. One. Scott, how are you feeling over here? Okay. <laughs> he still wants us to paint more minis. All right, good stuff, Scott. As always, we'll check back in with him and see how he's doing. My next thing to resolve was the other colors. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't have a good plan going into this. What I eventually came to as I sort of worked my way through it was this very desaturated plum color. And in fact, that then set the tone for the rest of the piece. But just as the skin was so highly desaturated, so too would the rest of my elements, or at least mostly. We'll talk about that in a second. But as I started working out from there, I had the value set. I knew where my light was going to be thanks to the skin. And now I knew how I wanted to treat my colors, making them all very desaturated and weak. From that, it was just a question of composition. But of course, we have to see how the other boys are doing as well. Let's check in on their projects. All right, let's, uh, let's do a midday update on day two here of the jam. John, you actually painted your model beyond the airbrush. Yeah, I, uh, last night I, I did a little work on her. Mm -hmm. and let's get in there. Just trying to think about... Give me, give me a rotate there, John. Oh, sorry. Most of it's not painted, so the rotation is pretty uneventful. It's all right. And then the back is blue and purple. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of building up like the, the true color of each surface just through highlights and trying to keep that amount of color minimal and impactful. And I started with just her skin because that's the most important part to set like my most vibrant and most bright points. Yep. And so everything else that I do is either needs to be less eye-catching than her face or I need to then go back in and boost the face more but that's kind of a, a go back and forth and and draw on that as I go so nothing is is complete there but it's just laying that out and really trying to define for myself how I'm going to use the colors that I put down to build up paint over the top and what techniques seem to work well for that gotcha and then how's the Golden Demon piece coming along? Um, since, you, since you decided to, to up the difficulty by working two projects at once. Yeah, it's really weird because last night when I was working on, on the bust for a while, I actually did not want to go back to the Golden Demon piece because it was like there's a totally different oh, sure. experience. Fun. Yeah. Not fun. Yeah, this is this is like <laughs> just fun. fun and interesting. Not fun Tedium. and interesting. Tedium. <laughs> yes, very grindy meticulous detail oriented tiny man painting um but that's no i'm there's a level of it that is i really enjoy painting the golden demon stuff here at vinci con because i can kind of go through the motions of this while we're chatting and hanging out and laughing and listening to music or whatever whereas if i'm at home by myself it feels like it's even more tedious of course absolutely <laughs> hours of work all right sam You've made oh some progress. God. What's going on, man? Oh, hey. There's Sam. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm just... It has a, a very strong light coming from... You know, facing right towards... Here, let's. I'm, I'm going to walk around to Sam so we can actually see it. Edit. No. No editing. <laughs> no clips. No, we're not clipping. Well, I'm not cutting anything. Takes either, so. That's right. We're just going to come around here. This is all just... We're just shooting this gorilla style. There we go. So what I'm, you can see these specular highlights coming into play, and I'm finally getting it to the point where I can really push those together. You know, the uh, the banding around her kind of ribs, abdomen area, um, having a lot of fun playing with the reflections in the skin areas. The hair is lacking, but man, who knew painting a larger model was just plain easier? Like the size of these bottles, right? There's so much room to work, and then everything's the same size online. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm managing a very, uh, reddish hue to everything, and I'm really happy about that. Finally kind of rounding the corner from base coats to the sharpening phase. Nice. Very nice. Mine is over there. I took some pictures of it. There it is. It's way over there. It looks dark, but trust me, I did stuff. I painted things. It's happening. Uh, hold on. Let's take a look over at Uncle Adam's area here. Now, Adam, you're not working on a, on a bust with us because, you know, that's not your thing. How many things have you assembled? Uh, let's see here. I've built five uh, Necrons mm -hmm. for my combat patrol. I've built three bases of scarabs, and I've built four uh, of these scavengers from North Star. 
and now I'm kit bashing. This guy's just a collection of different parts from a lot of different things. And I'm working on another one right now. And I'm going to try to build a group of uh, just complete randos and uh, kind of have fun with that as well. Very nice. You've got a friend here with you? I do. Hello, Penny. All right, let's check in with Scott. Let's see how he's doing over there, Scott. What's going on and today? Oh, it looks like he's hungry. I'm thinking about tendies. There you go. All right. We'll check in with you later, Scott, after you get some lunch and see how you're feeling. All right, very good. My next step was the non-metallic metal. There's quite a lot of it on this model, and I knew copper made sense given my scheme. I could beat it up, vertigree it, and I just thought it would better fit overall. Uh, the problem is copper is both a very complicated non-metallic metal scheme, but also because of the orange, it tends to be highly saturated. I knew I could rock this back some through the actual uh, verdigreeing of it when I when I sort of added that uh, the blues and greens of the verdigree, but I'm not sure if I did it enough. And in fact, to this day, right now, as we sit here, I'm still working on this. But as I was turning to the metals, the boys were making some really, really amazing progress in their own right. All right, there's John's stuff. Now, John, you've not made a lot of progress on your girl. Uh, zero, to be exact. Yeah, okay, but that's okay, because you made a lot of progress on this little boy. Yeah, I've been uh, doing a lot of work with the non-metallic metals on him, which, uh, shocker, take a long freaking time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I've gotten, I kind of wanted to get down the technique and the look of metals for the whole figure on the most important thing, which is this front left shoulder. It's front facing, it's, you get to see the whole surface. It's yep. not covered up by other things. So once I got that figured out <clears throat> and getting some feedback and some advice and tweaks that I made, and then copied that down to some smaller bits to get some small victories. <laughs> If you don't know, small victories in your paint jobs are very important. Especially when you're working on a piece like this where it's a tiny single guy and you have spent many, many hours on him yeah, so far. Like three days? One bite at a time. Mm -hmm. yes. Then I knocked out his little knee, knee pads and now I'm, I'm working on this other shoulder pad. Um, and then once I get that done, I'll go back and deal with his chest. Which I just did a rough blend to understand the volumes and the light. And then we'll bring that up. And then the hardest part of the model will be done. Nice, Sam. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You've been you've been hard at work. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, man. I've just been packing the paint onto this, but it's. I feel like it would have gone more quickly, but I'm experimenting a bit, trying to overemphasize the light sourcing on it. So there's a little bit of a back and forth. Um, but yeah, I'm getting to those final kind of capstone moments. I'm throwing freckles on the face. Screwing that up, um, trying to do justice to all the freckled people out there in the world, but I haven't always had the opportunity to do to work on such a large face, or it's at least been a while, so I'm having fun packing these extra details in. Very nice. It's looking really good. Adam, how goes the assembly? Look at this. The, the pile has grown. There's more people. Yeah, I uh, did four... Um kind of kit bashes at all kinds of different parts and pieces yesterday and now I am working on some steel raft steel rift not steel raft but steel rift uh, max HEVs as they're called uh, for steel rift I've already got one force built and painted at home uh, that is a freelance industrial force they're all bright orange and then these guys are the authority and I'm gonna probably paint them Probably like an off-white with some blue accents and things like that. If you've seen the recent movie that was in theaters called The Creator, there were these giant tanks that were run by the U.S. military, and I want to mimic those uh, kind of paint schemes a little bit. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're fun parts to put together. I'm enjoying them. So Very nice. And of course, we can't not check in with Scott. Let's see how he's doing over here. Uh, Scott? Okay, how we doing, buddy? I'm having a lot of fun. God, it came... I'm having a lot of fun being here in person. There you go. It looks like Not Scott's... Not that. No, that's okay. It looks like he's really getting along. Uh, here's his progress so far. So he's he's got a little ways to go, but it's okay. We're, we're pulling for him. All right. We'll talk about how my piece came out in just a second. Uh, but first, I want to throw it over to both of them 
for the end of this project and how they felt everything went. Obviously, John didn't get to work as much. He was more focused on his Golden Demon piece, but it was still amazing how much he could do in such a short time. And as I mentioned earlier, it was really fascinating to watch how each of us started from a different place. Um, Sam went in for fast, minimal, like some amount of value transition base coats on everything. John worked this huge color and value spectrum, uh, almost sort of a craft world style, really, um, of having yellows and magentas and oranges, peaches, blues, purples, to set the tone and the feeling and the warmth and the environment for the whole figure. And I went sort of full Instagram painter printer mode and just took one particular section at a time from zero to 95, 99%. And the fun part was neither of those were wrong, uh, or none of those were. They all got to the same place. And I think that's an important lesson. You can approach figures in lots of different ways. There's no one right road to walk. Uh, and this was really instructive in that regard. Okay. So, John, here's the result of your weekend. Yes. All right. What'd you think? Um... Working on two different models was a challenge, but also kind of fun, because if I got overwhelmed with one, I would just go to a different scale and a bigger model and kind of futz around a little bit. But uh, I'm reminded how much time it takes to paint tiny little Warhammer figures for Golden Demon, and that is a ton of time. So getting together with people and you kind of lose track of the time in a good way. The hours go by while you get a lot done. Um, feels really good. It feels like leaving here, I have some momentum. And I have the start of an exciting piece in the bust to kind of ruminate on the direction I want to finish it with and uh, bring her to life now that I've seen how you two have painted yours. And then I can just paint it like yours again. I say Nova 2024. That bust is showing up in the cabinet, right? Yeah. There you go. Reasonable. All Reasonable. right, very good. All right, Sam. So, uh, you're also done over the weekend. You were the first of us finished, surprising absolutely no one. Well, the first one to finish and the also one not to play Magic. Adam did not play Magic the Gathering either, but by abstaining from the game of cards, I have succeeded in life. This is, this is true. So, what did you learn with your piece? It was very bright. It was very different. It wasn't a normal Sam piece. Yeah, I've been trying to really manage my values and make sure I have more lighter tones where appropriate. Like, not every surface area goes down to absolute black, even though I like a great depth of contrast. Also trying to manage three different red tones. It, it came out, like, way more pink than I had imagined, but in a, an appreciable way. I was happy about it, you know? Kind of have that uh, vision, but it may change as you go on. Yeah, it's, it's very light, but I want to focus on the mids and saturation and hope those subtleties... I think they show through in the photos. It was, it was a delicate dance. Um, but yeah, man, as always, it's a blast to get together and hand my model across for some feedback from two, you know, respected artists. Um, and yeah, that definitely... Well, three. Helped. Don't forget about Scott. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. I love learning. He says, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. And, and I took a lot of that into account and it made my model better. And yeah, again, like, like John was saying, it's nice to just have this, uh, separate time to roll into something undistracted and in good company. Yeah. I mean, I think this was interesting and you know, John way in here, he's still in the room, obviously. Here he yes, is. I'm here. Hey John. So, I mean, look, this was an experiment that we've wanted to do for a while. You and I talked about this like a year ago. Yeah. Of everybody get the same model, and we all paint it and then get feedback on it. I, I think this was an amazing success. I think it was an awesome experiment. Other people should try it. What do you think? I think so, and I have to say thanks to Big Child for supplying the models. So much appreciated for that. And yeah, like getting these different perspectives and we all went drastically different directions which i really appreciate it wasn't just oh my pirate has the blue hat and mine has the green one completely different concepts like yeah you, you kind of flipped the reality of yours um john's is just so light based like the figure just looks washed in like dawn or evening sunset or something it's it's very cool so 
Yeah, just seeing all the all those different directions come together. Kind of forgot what I was saying at the beginning of this. No, it was awesome. John, any final thoughts? I thought that we were going to end up with a red a red bandana, a blue bandana, and a green bandana. Um, and it wasn't at all. I think you don't realize how wide of a spectrum from a blank canvas of a miniature can be until you sit around and just go through the same process as somebody else. So I'd recommend it if you have friends or, or a group that you'd want to get together to paint the same thing. And then finally, of course, we have to leave with, I mean, let's be honest, someone who's been here for us the whole weekend, you know, when we were down, when we were struggling, they were there to pick us up with words of encouragement. Uh, they were constantly just really an emotional rock. So Scott, what's your final thoughts? Yes, exactly as you said. He loves learning. Well done, Scott. I see you need to fix your glasses there a little bit. Overall, buddy, we, uh, in all seriousness, we've been making fun. But yes, Scott couldn't be here this year. But we miss you, Scott. We love you. And uh, here in spirit. So at any rate, there we go. Yeah, good. I think it was overall a rousing success. For my piece, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I'm going to show you some photos of everything here, all three of ours together. Again, John honestly only spent about three hours on his, so that's pretty great. But as you can see from the video, his Golden Demon piece, he made a ton of progress on, or at least the beginnings of it. He's going to have 300, 400 hours into that by the time he's all done. But the first steps on a very long road were walked successfully. Uh, and I wish him nothing but the best. I really want to see him bring home the trophy this year. But I found this incredibly instructive. I thought the pieces came out amazing. It was obviously a great time hanging out with the guys. Uh, and uh, all in all, I learned a lot in this process. I felt like this was really instructive, really helpful. And it made me push myself in a way that when we're working on our own pieces, we don't. Because I knew my piece was going to be directly up against theirs. And somehow, you know, that competition does sort of light a fire under you and make you work. So thank you so much for watching this. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can share this video. You can go down into the comments, or in, sorry, into the description, uh, where you can find Amazon links. If you need to pick up some of your own hobby supplies, you can click through there. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but gives the channel a nice kickback. Um, you can also support us by picking up a book that Uncle Adam and I actually published through Snarling Badger Studios. Uh, all, we were actually alpha testing our game coming out next year at this paint jam. Can't tell you anything else except it was a really fun time and I am really excited about what's coming. But uh, you can also, of course, join our Patreon. Uh, that is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. If you don't have anyone you can paint jam with, Hey, this could be a way to do so. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you next time.